sport after a certain age. One of the reasons I became a writer is because I was different from other people. I, I was interesting in the way that, unlike a lot of them, I fit in with everybody because I like people in general. I was uh, smart, but I was also a tough guy in a you know, an acceptable way. I don't mean a bully or anything like that, but I mean, I could deal. I wouldn't, you weren't going to pick on me, you know, or not long. And then, uh, so I had a different, different viewpoint, but nonetheless, I was uncomfortable with those kind of people all the time, and I wasn't interested in what they were, I wasn't interested in getting liquored up every weekend, and that just didn't do anything for me. I just thought, yeah, well, that's what the Washington puke on your shoes really doesn't appeal to me. You may, you know, and all their rights of manhood didn't appeal to me much. Uh, so uh, I was bored, and so I, when I was a kid, even as a kid, and I, I got into comic books, and comic books got me reading more broadly, and, and I'm, I'm a big fan of comic books still, I've written comic books, but um, so boredom was, was part of that, but I think a lot of other people, when they got older, they, they weren't readers, they, they weren't thinkers in, in the general sense of that word, I mean, everything was on the surface. Uh, or, and many of them were looking like, well, when I get to this age and I graduate, you know, there's the oil fields. That's what's going to happen, you know. And, uh, you know, I, I don't have a college education. I had a couple of years of college over a four-year span. But it was hard to afford it because my parents were poor. They always encouraged me to do it because they believed it was a, it was a way out, especially during that era that was considered very strongly a way out. And so I think a lot of these kids were looking at it and thinking it's not going to happen for me. Or if it does, I'm still going to just circle right back. I mean, they already were defeated before they got started. And I, as to why, it, it varies, you know. But I never felt that way. So I felt somewhat outside the norm. So I think they were bored, and I, I had been bored, and I recognized what that was about. And you recognized you didn't want to do the things that they were doing when they were bored, so. No, no, I, and I, I just didn't like who they were. You know, not all of them. I'm, just, I'm not trying to lump everybody together, but mm -hmm. the kind of people I write. That's the thing, too, is people say, oh, dude, you're writing about, hey, how you doing? That you're writing about East Texas or whatever. But you, you're not, you're writing about a particular aspect of East Texas, which is real. And sometimes, I, you know, it's over the top. It's, it's, it's bigger than life. And uh, uh, that's what you're doing. You know? you're, because in a way, the, you know, my dad was bigger than life as a person. He truly was bigger than life. He was, he was an amazing man. He, he was uh, not a big man, but he, his mother died when he was eight. He was beat with a whip to work in the uh, rose fields. He was treated. He was abused in a sense growing up, never laid a hand on me because he chose not to. He didn't say, I'll just pass this along and I got an excuse. He didn't do it. And he was uh, a guy who could crush apples in his hand, try it, you know, yeah. and, and take uh, coins and bend them bust belts with his chest and all that sort of stuff. I mean, he was that kind of bigger-than-life guy. He was a boxer and a wrestler in the Great Depression and fought at carnivals and things like that to make money. So he was bigger than life, you know. Couldn't read or write, you know, but just an amazing guy. So uh, my characters are oftentimes bigger than life, good or bad. Mm -hmm. But the bad people interest me for some reason. When I was younger, I was much more, you know, like the comic book heroes and things. But I got older, I just felt like nothing wrong with that. I just didn't feel like the world worked that way much. I felt, I felt it was more shaded, more nuanced. Would you say that uh, reflection upon those who do bad things or think bad things is, is perhaps that you can, you can see yourself, particularly with people you grew up with, I, going that route? Yeah, you can see yourself going that route, too, because you, you're in that. I mean, I don't think I would, but nonetheless, you understand how it happens. Because except for this little slight turn of the dial, it could be you. And your dad would have been different than the right. way he was. And you can, you can, uh, you can, if, you, if you're a writer, you have to be able to look inside yourself and know that everything bad you could do, but everything good you could do as well, and that you make a choice. But nobody stands firmly on one side of the line or another. Some people step way wide over the line. Or, 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 well, I, what I actually think is nobody stands completely on the good side, but there are people who stand almost completely on the bad side because whatever good they have is totally overridden by, by the evil they do. But if a person, you know, occasionally puts his foot over the line, I don't, I don't know what that would be. You know, somebody maybe stole a pencil when they were five or, or cheated on their wife or something. You know, that doesn't make them a, that good thing but it doesn't make them evil per se. You know, like people who murder or kill or choose to make other people miserable by choice or whatever, you know. So I think as a writer, you have to be able to look at both sides of the line.